Yeah, uh, great atmosphere for college football. I'll tell you what, it was uh, a lot of fun um, having that kind of atmosphere. I think our kids really enjoyed it. We thought our fans showed up and uh, did a great job, made it feel like um, it was like 50-50 um, with our fans out there. Uh, a lot of credit to Georgia Tech. They did a really good job, played hard, played physical. I thought Buster and his staff did a great job with the run plan. Um, we expected to get a lot of quarterback run. They did a good job of that. But once again, our kids show up very resilient. Um, tough. I mean, this game is not measured by stats and rushing yards and first downs. It's measured by heart. And you got to have a whole lot of heart to go out there and fight and play um, like our guys have done week after week after week. I mean, you see across the country in these rivalry games what happens. And uh, I know better than anybody that it can go either way in these type games. Very emotional, very different week in terms of uh, Thanksgiving and everything going on. But uh, I thought our offense played with a lot of consistency. We were able to run the ball really well and uh, really physical up front. The line of scrimmage won the game for us. What can you say just about Kendall Melton's performance, a career high night for him, 156 rushing yards, two TDs? He seems like he's kind of starting to peak right at the right time. Really physical. Uh, he's getting his pads down, running through contact. Uh, it breaks a lot of arm tackles. You know, I saw two or three of their guys have to go out from having to tackle him because he's really physical and downhill. But make no mistake about it, it's not just him. Uh, it's, it's a lot of them dudes up there in front of him. It's quarterback run checking. It's uh, front O-line moving people, tight ends receivers blocking downfield. Uh, it's a team effort, and uh, he was a big, big part of that tonight. I mean, even Dejan had some good runs, but I thought Kendall was really physical. 29 career straight wins for you guys, a new SEC record. Just what does that mean to you, and what does it say about your program? He says we had a tough one next week. I mean, it's 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 humility's a week away. That's what we say around our place, and uh, it's a great honor. I mean, it's something we'll look back on, and it's not one person. You know, it's, it's if I'm thinking right, that's three different teams, right? And uh, there's there's a lot of kids that aren't in that locker room that were a part of that, um, but you know that 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 that's not the focal point for us. The focal point for us is to get better. You know, and we got we got to continue to get better. Our kids have a lot of pride, and they want to get better. You know, offense felt like they left points out there. Defense feels like they didn't play uh, the quarterback run game as well as they should. So the good thing about that locker room is a lot of guys know there's work to be done. Kirby, were, were Brock, Ladd, or Tate were they close to being available tonight? Define close. I mean, I mean if it was a championship game. Could you play them? If they could play, they'd play. Yeah. I mean, 100%. If they could have played, they played. I don't think you measured it. It was a championship game. It was a state championship game. Yeah. And they wanted to play. All of them wanted to play. Look, guys, we're beat up. we got two freshman linebackers out there playing, I don't know, 50% of the snaps. Smiles out there fighting his tail off. He's, he's hurt and beat up. And uh, we got everybody does. <clears throat> we're not going to whine and cry about it. We just we got to get the next man up. And uh, we got to continue to make plays with the other guys. Was Brock just a soreness with that ankle coming out of last week? Yeah, he was more sore this week than he's been. I mean, he was not able to do much uh, during the week, and uh, he tried to go. He, he, he wanted to go, uh, but it, it just I means he's, he's sore. He's got to be honest with us and tell us. How about Dylan for y'all tonight? I mean, how well has Dylan been for y'all, and how important has he been these last two you know, games? Really important. I mean, he's a good football player. He's a, a jack of all trades. He's a great kid, hard worker, makes plays with the ball. Um, I think the offensive staff deserves a lot of credit for finding different people. I mean, when you talk about five starters being out on offense from like different spots and then still to go out there and do what they do, they they just find the next man who's the next man to touch the ball, and they've done a good job. Kirby, do you think your team's done enough to earn a playoff spot now, or do you think it's going to come down to next week? I really wouldn't even want to answer that. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm so worried about what we're doing and getting better that – I'm going to leave that for you guys, you know, like what, 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 I'm not worried about lobbying for anything. I'm worried about playing for an SEC championship, which is really hard, really hard to get. Um, and there's uh, one of the greatest venues in all sports is the SEC championship. I've been very fortunate to coach in it a lot of times uh, from DC position and head coach position. And it's probably the best atmosphere that I've ever been around. So. We'll be concerned ourselves with that. Coach, you said that defense didn't play exactly where they wanted to, but overall, since the beginning of the season to now, how would you rate your defense overall performance? It's hard to rate it. Uh, game by game, probably easier. Um, I'm really proud of the connection they have 
and how hard they work. Um, I don't even look at the stats. I mean, I literally don't know what the stats say. I just know that um, there's some times we could play better, and there's some times we've had to play with guys that might not quite be ready yet, but they've had to step up and answer the bell. I love coaching them every day. I love being around them. I love our defensive staff. Um, I love all that, but um, we got to get better. What does it say just about the depth and the talent that you have in this team? We have no Brock, we have no Lad, you have no Ra Ra, yet you still have multiple guys making big plays for you in big moments. Well, it says that our offensive staff can find ways to get them the ball, and uh, we got to keep finding the next man up. You know, I mean, it is what it is. It happens to everybody. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the depth we have, but I don't think anybody's got enough depth because. I mean, we we're thin at some spots. We had to, you know, we had to practice different ways the last couple of weeks just because of how, how thin we are. Did were you like disappointed with the? Uh, 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 obviously, you were disappointed there was an interception, but the, the, a pass call in that situation at the end where you could have uh, maybe put the game away. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we we're trying to score a touchdown. I mean, we're not gonna play for a field goal, so we called a play to, to score a touchdown. Unfortunately, I think they dropped eight and. Uh, Ball they got tipped or ricocheted. I'm not real sure off of maybe our guy or their guy. And unfortunate when I mean, that, that happens in the game and uh, try to avoid that. You'd like to have a situation there that you get the points, get the field goal. But uh, if we can score a touchdown, we need to score a touchdown. Did you understand their explanation on lineman downfield on that, on that? Yeah, he said he was past uh, the threshold for, for how far he should be. It's just uh, I've never had it called for me. Now I've had it called against me. So I've been dealing with that thing for a lot of years. Did it feel any more special winning the state championship against a former coach that also played this game with you as well, just for you as an alumni of this game? It's not about me and him, or at least it's not for me. It's about these kids. I want those kids to walk out of that room with a, a zero in their loss column, and, and that's what I want. And uh, there's a group of seniors in there that, that just got a chance to do that, and uh, that's what it's about is is you know dominating your, your rivalries. We say SEC East, crossover opponent, and in-state rivalry. You got to win those to have good years, and uh, those kids have done that for three years now. Would you make Oscar Delp's performance tonight, especially his downfield blocking? I don't know. I didn't really get to watch it. I, I, Oscar's a tough, tough <laughs> dude. Love the way he works and practices. Zion how Lowe, much of a Zion Lowe, I'm sorry, Zion Lowe's tip on the on the fourth down play. Just how big a play that's huge play in the game. Huge play in the game because momentum's going to swing the other way with a PI call, and uh, that tip ball is big and. Coach Scott stresses that and works on it all the time. We always kids he load. He's he's finally starting to get some of those tips in his in his latter years. It's a big play for him. Kirby, how much of a challenge was it just facing quarterback Haynes King and especially the way he can extend plays with his legs? Yeah, he's number one, he's an incredible athlete. I don't know that it's how much he extends plays with his legs as much as how how good he runs the ball. Their run scheme is really good. They're they're running a form of triple option from the gun and uh, he has multiple options on each play. He made good decisions and uh, we look like we misfit some things, but I don't know that. I, I got to go back and watch it. They might have just whipped us, but it'll be interesting to watch it and see. We can follow up on that a little bit. Javon said something like, "We can't get to where we want to go like by giving up 200 rushing yards a game." Just where would you say the, the run defense is at at this point in the season? Which Depends on what kind of run it is. Like, there's, there's we go back to our conversations we've had before. There's different kinds of runs. Uh, there's quarterback runs and gap runs, which are really hard to defend if you have a good quarterback and you can run the ball with it. I've seen it all over the country. Um, so we're pretty good at stopping a lot of runs. We struggle with stopping some of those runs, and uh, we got to do a better job. <laughs> From Huddle into you've been here before the last few years, take, win the last game of the season. What, what does this week look like before you get ready for the SEC championship? Like it does every week. We're going to start tomorrow and prepare, and you don't change what you do because of who you play. I mean, we have a really good routine we feel comfortable with, and uh, it'll be a game week. Did you get to see how the uh, Alabama-Auburn game ended, or did you no, hear about it anecdotally? We were we were in the locker room. Somebody came up and told me we went on the field for warm-ups, uh, or somebody said that Auburn had won, um, and it was fourth and whatever. Uh, and I didn't think about it again until we were coming in, and somebody said they, they converted that and ended up winning it. So I never saw it, just heard about it. Coach, you guys had a couple of big special teams plays tonight. What kind of impact did, you, did that have on the team? Uh, it was a huge field position. I mean, I think the, the, the special teams outside of our, our rushing offense and our offensive line, that was the biggest uh, win in the game, that third element. I mean, to be able to go out there and, and dominate the kickoff returns. And, you know, nobody gives a kid credit, but Zirkle didn't give them a chance to return one. So, I mean, as much as we got to return it, they didn't. And that was, I mean, it's probably the difference in the game, that and recovering the onside kick. 
Coach, I'm sure you haven't had a chance to study him yet, but how similar are the threat that Jalen Bill Rowe might provide with his legs is what you just saw in Haynes King? Like you said, I hadn't seen him. I don't know that. You know, I, I know they're physical, they're big, they got a really good quarterback, got good wideouts, they got a good team. Time for two more. I think you have more penalties than you usually have this season. You've been pretty, uh, you know, consistently with that. What, your thoughts were a couple of them uncharacteristic in terms of. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't judge. I don't ever talk about officiating, but I mean, it's one of those that we go to a different conference. They have different standards. I mean, we, we evaluate every crew that we get. Their crew had higher, more penalties than any SEC crew going into the game. So we just thought it was going to be a more penalized game. They, they are, uh, I guess they call it closer. You know, they had more holdings, more personal fouls. They just have more fouls in their games than we average in the SEC. So um, it just so happened that a lot of them seemed like they went against us in uh, opportune times. But uh, I, don't, I don't question the officiating. I think those guys do a great job. Marvin Jones and Christian Miller both get sacks tonight. How big is that for them, especially as young players, as they continue to develop? Yeah, they work hard, man. Those guys work hard. and they. Uh, they, they, they get their snaps. They, they they go out there and compete each day. Marvin's getting better and better with every game, and, and Christian's getting better. He's been going down the scout team and, and growing as a player as well. Thank you.